Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're to another video with Link C. Hope you're having a lovely day. Today, we're looking at the DLC of Ajax and Diomedes for Troy, a Total War saga. I haven't touched Troy in a while, but I think it's a perfect opportunity to start getting slightly back into it and looking through what the game has to offer since the DLC is coming out very shortly. It was very kind of CA and Saga to give me early access, and I think it's a great time as any to uh, look at it in detail. While we're doing this, however, I must admit I am not up to date with the current patch and current meta balancing of Troy. If you guys want to check out someone who's really doing good work on Troy, check out Yarl of the Epium Way. I'll link his uh, YouTube down below. He's been doing excellent videos, lots of multiplayer battles, and just analysis of individual units and gameplay mechanics. Genuinely, genuinely speaking, the guy deserves a lot more love, so go there and give him some love. That said, let's see what we have. Well, we have Ajax and Amides, they are two legend heroes, and it's quite unique that uh, as a DLC we get two heroes on the same side. It's not a head-to-head, -head, but rather they're best bros, best buddies, and they're working together. And we see this as they work in conjunction uh, to each other and we'll go deeper into their abilities. But long story short, their faction mechanics gives them uh, stronger warriors and champions that achieve renown as Ajax. Uh, Ajax himself has special units and we'll go through them as well. I believe the special units from what I could see are Ajax companions and Ajax's wall, which are super strong infantry. And... Uh, quite strong in general, dealing a lot of damage and taking a lot of uh, health. The downside of it, they do have a smaller unit uh, size. There is, of course, the ability to train your units with the teachings of the uh, Pigoni, I am pronouncing that completely wrong, and complete objectives to dominate weaker factions such as the Diomedes. And this is the function of the uh, second guy um, in the DLC, which is really cool. As an epic missions, they have two missions, one each. One of them tries to become the great by collecting renown, and the other one wants to return to Thebes on his quest to surpass his father. They also have a new special event, which can trigger uh, the Achaean heroes to weaken Troy's defenses by capturing the statue of Athena. With regards to units, we have uh, the same uh, unit structure and the same unit rosters, reskinned and restyled for this faction. We can see that there are some new units, such as the Night Runners, we have uh, the Airgrive Swordsmen over there, Heroic X-Runners, Renowned X-Men, and Argive Swordmasters. The rest of the units, as we can see, are the Slingers, uh, Swordsmen, and Spearmen combo that we had before. There are also some Marines as well, since these are Achaean, and hence they will have the quite interesting mix. From what I can see, they're a good mix between the Spartans and the troops of uh, Odysseus. With that said, let's jump in into their campaign and see how they start, what they start with, and what cool mechanics they have. Starting first, looking at Ajax, we can see that he starts very much near Mycenae and near uh, Pythia, with Ach between Achilles and Agamemnon, and of course, he starts in the city of Salamis over here, and he has a, quite a few unique mechanics. So as we saw, we has some unique units. He has Ajax's wall, Salamis swordsmen, uh, some bowmen, and slingers, which are unique to him. He gets extra movement range at sea, and he has missile resistance in all units in the hero's army. So his specific army is really good at tanking units. So you might want to get a fast army with him that can run and close the gap really quickly since they can take the damage as well. That said, you have Warriors of Renown, where you carve a path for the Warriors to become Hero of Legend, and you need to grow your renown by completing unique missions and gaining top tier traits, allowing you to build up your troops as you go along. A renown allows you to strengthen your diplomacy with dance and forge peace between the factions, which is really cool uh, to see, allowing you a non-aggressive path as well while doing your missions, allowing you a mixture of diplomacy and fighting, which is often uh, quite necessarily needed in Total War games and uh, such. Apologies, my cat decided that it's time to start playing and it's now um, currently ripping the chair next to me. Uh, he's been sleeping all day. He also has, of course, the Path of Greatness where you need to challenge great warriors, defeat the challengers, which is similar to um, 
Achilles and you gain more power and you get them to join your cause. So this is really cool. Let's jump into his campaign and see how he starts, what unique units he has and what he starts with. As we just saw, Ajax starts at Salamis and he starts over with the following army. He has club warriors, he has Ajax companions, which are really nice to see, uh, two spearmen and island skirmishers. As you can see, he uh, starts with a semi-decent army. You start at war with uh, this guy, who is from Achilles, which I imagine are from the islands. Yeah, exactly from the islands down here, who control this region. And okay, thank you. And we can challenge them. Uh, you renown or challenges Paragon. Okay, that's quite an interesting thing. So creating a challenge will be quite interesting. Also, you need quite a lot of food for this this case. So we know all about the royal decrees, diplomacy, uh, the divine will. But let's see the warriors of renown. What they give. Uh, renown, growing fame and influence with the dance. Grows complete special missions to avenge allies, gain top tier unit traits, or win heroic victories. Renown. Improves the diplomatic standing with the down factions and allows to host a celebration of force to warring units, warring neighbors. So essentially, it allows you to get stronger units and also to uh, give special items to your units, making yourself uh, interesting. Host a celebration, you need to offer a prize to the winner. Okay, so you offer a uh, prize and ancillary select as a reward will be given away. Okay, so you give out items to get uh, giving away and invite guests to then win favor with them. That is quite interesting. Total renown will give you extra tiers and each tier will grow. You get diplomatic relations as you go along, trade relations and the other such things. That is quite interesting to see. So that's really cool to see as a mechanic. And then he has the path to greatness where um, you get also more renown from it, where you challenge different individuals for different various amounts of money and you challenge them to a fight and allowing you to gain more renown and hence becoming stronger. You can see what armies they have and everything it seems. Wait, where, where, where is the army thing that came up? I have no idea where the army thing is, but again, this helps towards your renown and builds towards that. So that's quite interesting to note. You do start with the city of Salamis and you also start with Megara over here, which is your capital, uh, province capital. Uh, quite a few interesting buildings, straight off the bat. You have a little bit of uh, resources coming in. You have wood, but uh, you can get food from this settlement. You will have to attack Athens if you want to have gold access over there and expand in the north towards Thebes, getting more resources. All in all, it seems quite an interesting start. Okay, let's jump into the next one. The next is uh, Diomedes. Diomedes is Argos' finest. He seems to be uh, quite a nice chap, looking good looking chap. Uh, and he's one of the epigroid. Diomedes calls on his companions, veterans known as strategists, to train his troops for him. So he has a troop training uh, initiative, which is quite interesting to see. He trains Paragon units, grant him additional edge in battle, giving them additional units uh, strength. He is also a master strategist, allowing him to dominate the battles and uh, to make him do uh, make uh, his enemies do his uh, his bidding. Completing special military objectives uh, against enemies grants Argos a unique resource known as dominance. Using the dominance, you can intimidate less powerful rulers into entering unfavorable diplomatic agreements. So you can use your military might to bully people around you. That's actually quite cool. He starts with uh, he has the access to the knight runners, to heroic X runners. Uh, gave sword masters and the renowned X-Men, which we saw earlier on. Recommended playstyle is uh, being a well, seems to be quite strong in flanking units. He does get favor of Athena since he is Athena's uh, boy toy for this one, and his army has a lot of charge uh, ability. Let's jump straight into the campaign and see where he starts exactly. It seems he starts right next to Salamis over here and uh, again one and he starts in the city of Argos of course and his entire schmick is to go and destroy Thebes. So as Diomedes you start literally under the shadow of Mycenae over here with Agamemnon on to your side. Your first enemy is going to be over here at Leos of the Corinthians. You're going to be fighting the Corinthians and trying to beat them down. The initial army is significantly weaker than that of Ajax, where he does not have that many strong units, and you only get basic slingers, young spears, uh, raiders, and then some decent spears and Argive X-Men, which will be interesting to see how his early game campaign is. You do, however, start with the city of Argos, which is quite uh, well built. You have eight, uh, 
square over here and you have the master filter already built allowing you to access the spearmint quite early on and of course you have the city of trainia over there looking at his special abilities he has master strategist which is what we discussed already and it basically allows him to use uh, to gain dominance from beating different faction leaders in this case um, with regards to Corrin, if you capture the city of Corrin, it will give you um, 60 dominance. If you beat the faction leader in battle, Clitius, which we don't know where it is, you gain 50. And if you beat Lyos, you gain 40. And it seems that you can use faction within in active objectives. There are no factions within active objectives. Okay, it's quite interesting. So we're currently at war with the Corinthians. If we beat them up, we gain levels of dominance. The higher the dominance, the stronger we are. You have enough dominance to spend it on weaker foes. Okay, if you have over 100 and maximum dominance, you can uh, bully smaller foes and uh, you can confront a weaker faction using the dominance so basically you beat up your enemies and then the next target you can simply confederate from what i understand and then so he gets argos finest uh, as you can see i'm literally just seeing this the first time with you guys and i'm trying to you know explain it as i go along so what we can understand here is that <laughs> essentially you grab a unit and you give them a an additional ability in this case you give them the abilities to get extra charge bonus extra battle speed and um, the ability of strider is added to their um, faction so we're talking about the abilities over here the this the um, description that explains them which gives them different buffs etc in the case of if we give them uh polybonus over here they get x flanking defense improved strategist attribute the attributes on here will change and you can get different ones and you unlock them as you go along these attributes are quite interesting and quite uh amusing to see because this would mean a lot of things will change in the future for total war games essentially if this is implemented properly uh, in future Total War games as well, and it looks like it's implemented quite well in this. Even then again, I haven't tested it yet, so I cannot really say. Um, it would mean that you can train your units to be specific according to the armies that you're facing. So you have a shield units that are faster, or you have shield units that can withstand lots of... Uh, lots more damage or with higher morale because you're fighting against a unit that is against an army that is more mobile than you are or against um, ar archer based armies you get shield units that can take more damage and so on and so forth or even uh, you, you get shielded units with spears that can deal more damage towards horses or take a bigger charge bonus uh, charge uh, impact on to, to them so such a thing is quite interesting because it adds a level of um, for us fun because we get to edit our units to our liking and two it also adds that level of strategy that just makes the game a bit more sublime and adds more variety with less available which i mean is in the case of uh, troy there is of course a limit on what kind of units can be uh, created but in this case they're going grounded by creating these different abilities we've seen with the amazonians where they added the different uh, units getting too many kills they automatically get a debuff because their weapons are damaged and in this case we can see units uh, basic units being strengthened through different mechanics and through different structures uh, so something definitely i'll be interested to see and something that could uh, change the way we interact with the game with that said i hope you enjoyed this i definitely find this quite interesting honestly just opening up the game i kind of want to give uh, troy another try in fact i just put up a poll on my youtube community tab to see if people are interested if we get a uh, 20 30 people that are interested are probably just go ahead and do one this week if you guys are interested in seeing more seeing the gameplay and seeing if troy has changed uh in the past few months please let me know in the comments below and i will try uh will not try i will do a live stream on this and we can enjoy it together and see if anything has changed and if it's you know improved and add, has a lot more value than it did when it was launched it's a good game in general i quite liked it i have released my initial impressions of it when it came out and it would be nice to come back to it now a few months later and see how the game has adapted with that said ladies and gentlemen hope you're having a lovely day i'll uh, see you tomorrow and till then take care stay safe and bye bye